Welcome to the Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. If you'd like to give a 10 minute lightning talk, please email me at joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Ed Finkler, and he'll be talking about an intro to the Slim framework. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Ed some feedback. Ed, take it away. Uh oh, they're going to give me feedback about this? That's not good. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Ed Finkler. I'm doing this intro to Slim Framework. Uh, I'm That's me. That's a picture of me. It's an attractive picture. I don't wear those rings, though, anymore on my right hand, so that's sort of misleading. Um, and this is sponsored by Engine Yard. Thank you, Engine Yard, for sponsoring us. It's very nice. So, yeah, this is an introduction to Slim. Uh, there's info about me. Again, that's my name. If you forgot, it said Finkler. Uh, and my Twitter handle is Funkatron, so if you want to bother me there, that's a good place to do it. Uh, and my website is Funkatron.com, um, and I did not build it with Slim. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. So let's get started. Uh, now that I figured out the arrow key, Slim is a micro framework. And so one might ask, what is a micro framework? What is that, Ed, you might say? And I would say, well, it's more micro than a regular framework. And that's really all it means. It means different things to different people. Um, most of the time, it deals with things like processing HTTP requests and sending HTTP responses. But the, the primary uh, thing is what it doesn't have. It won't include things like typically a database layer uh, to access databases. It won't include things like you know, uh, other kinds of libraries to access external resources, such as caching layers or um, anything of that sort, a, you know, libraries to access various APIs and things like that. Most micro frameworks for, for web application development focus just on processing HTTP requests and sending HTTP responses and usually have a number of different tools related to that. But beyond that, there's not much else. Um, so it's definitely a situation where you're going to bring your own database access stuff, you're going to bring your own caching stuff, you're going to bring your own libraries for almost anything except for the stuff where you get the data from the HTTP request and send back the HTTP response. Um, most micro frameworks also will, now some of them, uh, depends, will include a templating library, library by default, like Flask for Python will include a templating library by default. Um, uh, Slim does not, um, uh, partly because PHP in and of itself can act as a templating uh, library or a templating, or templating uh, system, and it works fine for that and things like that. Um, I personally use Twig with Slim, but you know you could use whatever you want to. Uh, but so the general idea is, uh, although you bring your own stuff, you don't reinvent the wheel unless the wheel really sucks, and then you do, you know reinvent your wheel uh, unless it's really terrible. Most of the time we're blessed within PHP that we've, there's lots of great libraries that are out there now um, that you can get on um, packages via composer. So there's lots of good single purpose libraries that you can pull in and use exactly what you want. So now there's a couple, there's actually several uh, PHP micro frameworks. Probably the most popular one is Silex, which I believe is based on the Symfony components. Um, and so why do you want to use Slim as opposed to Silex or Bullet or Fat Free or a bunch of other different kinds of micro frameworks out there? Well, there's a couple of reasons I like it. And um, that isn't necessarily why you should like it. I think that when I was kind of looking at different micro frameworks, I tried to evaluate a few different things. I looked at a bunch of them, try to keep up with that kind of stuff and see what they do and what they don't do. But generally, these are the reasons why I like it. The first thing that I've already shown the slide is that you do know that there's not any external requirements with it. And that's one thing that I prefer. Um, I don't like to pull libraries um, in that I'm not sure about. Uh, that I'm not familiar with. I like to know exactly what's getting in. So I like to avoid a lot of dependencies on my stuff. Now, you may not care about that, and you and I may get into a giant fight about that. But at the end of the day, that's the reason why I prefer Slim, is that it doesn't have any external requirements, and I like that a lot. Um, it has good documentation, um, and that's something that's really appealing. Uh, a lot of uh, frameworks don't, or a lot of libraries that you come across don't. Uh, Slim has good documentation. Uh, 
And uh, so that helps a lot in, in adopting it. It's probably not something, uh, the documentation really isn't aimed at, say, somebody who's never de developed web apps before. But if you've done PHP development before, especially if you've done PHP development with any kind of other framework, you're going to follow the Slim for, uh, documentation fine. Um, let's see here. Ah, yes, the de it has a pretty decently sized community. It's not the biggest in the world, but it's pretty good size. There's a lot of people who work with Slim and like it. Um, there are companies that work with it. There are uh, individuals who work with it. Uh, and so there, the, that's a, an appealing thing uh, when considering like a different kind of a, a framework or open source library to use. How many other people are using it? Not for the sake of just popularity or whatever, but generally it's easier to find resources uh, in terms of, oh yeah, other people have run into the problem that I'm running into and how do I fix that? So uh, that helps a lot. So just as a little bit of a kind of a, these aren't checkboxes, they're bullet points, but this gives you an idea of sort of, sort of major features that, that come with Slim that are uh, maybe of note. Uh, it has flexible route matching, so you can do things like match on regular expressions if you really want to and things of that nature. Uh, that, that stuff's pretty flexible, and I, I haven't run into a case where I was like, oh, I can't do this with the routing that's in there. Um, it has both app level middleware and then also route level middleware. So you can have middleware that runs every time the application runs in a different spot, if, you know, pick which spot it attaches to. Or you can have things that only apply to individual routes. Um, and you can also, uh, I should say, with the route middleware, you can apply them to a group of routes if you do a, a grouping thing, which I think I have an example for here. Uh, hey, I forgot a letter in here, but it says custom hook system, uh, SysDy. Uh, anyway, but there's a, a hook system where you can add additional hooks into something where if you're building something with Slim and want to redistribute it and have the ability to sort of to, to hook into stuff and add callbacks and things like that for other people to do that, you can do that. Um, it has basic flash messaging, which is something that originally came out of Rails, this idea where you sort of send a one-time message that goes down with the session. Um, and it also has encrypted cookies and sessions, which we use a lot so that uh, at, at uh, Fictive Kin, where I'm working right now, uh, we use that a lot to avoid um, having to have a centralized store for all of your sessions. It makes things a lot easier if you just store it in the cookie, but you want it to be encrypted because you don't want stuff stolen out of that, so you can encrypt it up for you. And I guess the biggest thing for me, the biggest thing that appealed for me with Slim was just how easy it was to get started. And I think the best way to do that is just show a little code. So I'm going to do that here. This is, in fact, an entire Slim application. Um, the, uh, it should be pretty clear. The first uh, place here, I'm requiring uh, an autoloader. And in that autoloader, uh, I'm assuming here that I've used Composer to include stuff, and that would be beyond the scope of this talk, but I've used Composer to include Slim and maybe some other libraries, and I'm just requiring that autoloader that Composer generates for me. Um, and then I just have a little use statement to get the uh, Slim uh, object out there. Uh, that next line, I instantiate the Slim object, and I call that app. And that's it, you don't have to call it app; you can call it whatever you want to. But it's pretty common to see that you call that app in there. All the examples do, and I just write it like that anyway. And then you kind of just start attaching routes to stuff. So in this case, uh, I attach a get route, so it will respond to the get verb with HTTP, and hello slash, and then colon name. And that what it'll do is it will um, then match that colon name to uh, anything in there that's not a forward slash. So any characters in there before, so in not, that aren't a forward slash. And then it'll go ahead and put that bad boy right here in the uh, function argument. Um, so you've got this. Uh, it, so it'll be in the dollar sign name parameter. And then you can just uh, inside that little um, anonymous function that you use as the route handler, uh, it will spit out hello name and just spits that text out. And you could just echo right there and Slim will automatically grab all the output you make and will send that to the browser. Uh, and then uh, there's just a line after you've attached all your routes and done all your setup and stuff, you just do app run, call that method and that's it. So this is an entire Slim application right there. I really like it. I really like that you can build, it's, it can be that simple. Uh, something that's like five or six lines of code, and you can do it. Now I'm going to show a couple little more advanced things. Um, one of the common things that you do uh, is if you, you generally, let's say you've got a large application and you're writing, say, 
100 or 200 route handlers or something like that. You've got something or just like 20. That's a lot. You probably don't want to put those all in one file. So you'd want to separate those out into separate files. Um, so a common thing to do would just be to include a series of them here. Now, I just usually include them directly um, without having some kind of thing where I'm, say, looping through stuff or searching the file system. I think generally that's going to end up being faster for you to do it like that. Um, to just include directly, but you could do a bunch of different things. You could search the file system if you want for a particular directory for route files, whatever. And all these route files are, again, they're just include, so I don't have to do anything super fancy with them. And inside there, I would define routes. And this might be what so one of those sort of one of those route files uh, looks like, where again. Um, I'm just putting some route handlers in here. And this shows a few different things that you do with Slim. Now that first line here, you can see I've, I've made a group and this is basically a route grouping and you sort of set like, okay, where is this group going to sit? In this case, it's going to sit under slash articles. And you can see that same structure here where it wraps it inside of an anonymous function and that goes all the way to the bottom to the bottom line. So everything in between here is all inside that function. And so any of the route handlers then you set up inside there, that stuff is all going to be mapped to URLs under our slash articles. So if I do this one for app get slash foo, that's going to map to slash article slash foo. You load that up in your web browser. Um, and then this is a little example of, you know, how you'd write a, write a simple uh, handler in here. Uh, you have an anonymous function. You pass in the app object. It's pretty common you do that. That way you can get all the requests, response stuff, do a bunch of things. So generally you make that closure here where you do use app. And then you do some stuff here, which I've left out, any kind of logic. And the last step, and this is where the templating libraries come in, is you call this app render. Now, by default, what it would do is it would load up a PHP file and would sort of just treat it like kind of like an include, but it injects in some data for you. Um, in this, in the cases where I've done it, you would set up something, which I don't show here, but it's real straightforward to set up something that would work with Twig, work with Smarty, work with any kind of uh, templating library you want. If they don't, if somebody hasn't already written a, the tiny little handlers you need for these, you can just write your own. And so the first argument is a template, uh, is a path to a template. The second one is just uh, any, the data you're going to pass in, and I'm just passing in a hash of articles and these PG URIs, and then that stuff's going to be available in my template, just like any other templating stuff you do. Now, uh, the second one here, this little route shows you, a, it's a get route. It has a slightly more complex uh, uh, route handler, or excuse me, route matching here, where it has ID, and then it has an optional parameter, and you tell it's optional because it's got the... Uh, parentheses around it. And then you pass it, again, the function, the, that, that anonymous function where you have the ID and then a title. And by default, I'm going to make it equal to null because we may not get anything from that. That's an optional uh, path parameter. Um, and then in the same case here, we would render out some stuff. We would have done a little bit of logic before that line. Uh, and then you can pass render. We give it the, the path to the template, some data. And then you can also, that third argument can be an HTTP status. So you can pass 200, you can pass 400, whatever, things like that. And it also has, uh, I should say, it also has handlers for basic things like not found, redirects, things of that nature. All that stuff's built in. And there's one other final thing you show on here is this conditions guy which you pass on here at the end this method of conditions what that lets you do is that i can say here well i only want this to match if id matches this regular expression that i put in here so in this case this handler will only be matched if the second path out is it the second one actually it's the first one well it's the second one if you consider it article slash id if it's all digits so that's where my regex down there is only it has to be one or more digits down there. So if something, if I say article slash uh, foobar baz, that's not going to match that handler because I did, I did this special condition stuff that lets me do some regular expression work on it. Um, that's it. Pretty simple talk. I hope you dig it. I like Slim a lot. Maybe you will too. Pretty cool. Check it out at slimframework.com. And that's it. We've got uh, one question, Ed, uh, or actually two uh -oh. questions. Uh, the first question is, does it have a dependency injection tool? So it doesn't come with a dependency injection tool exactly, not a separate one. Now, you can use that 
And I'm sort of not a fan of this because I think it starts you start attaching too much stuff a little bit to the app object. But because you end up passing that app object around to almost all your handlers, you usually make a closure and pass that into everything. Typically, what you can do is you might attach some stuff to that. And you can use the app object. It has some dependency injection or some people, because you can set it up as a singleton, they might call it a service locator. I know there's some debate about how you call those things. So I have in some cases used, you know, set up, say, singleton objects uh, that sit off of that app guy. And I can show you an example. It's kind of outside the scope here, but that's in the documentation how, under dependency injection. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, the second question was, does it support slash promote unit testing? Well, it, it does not interfere with it. Um, it does not have any special kind of unit testing stuff built into it. But um, generally, I've not had many problems with it. One of the things I like about Slim is that it's really easy for me to attach to because I, I'm generally you know, separating out my, my code as separate modules, separate reusable modules anyway, that, and, and because it's so lightweight, I tend to think that it sort of lends itself to, to unit testing. Um, but it doesn't have any special like test harnesses or things like that that come with it. Any kind of special like route testing stuff that comes with it. So generally what you, I guess, you know, other people who know way more about testing than I do might be in good, you know, might have different ideas. But what I would probably do is for uh, a lot of my libraries that I'm bringing into it, um, I would try to separate out like big chunks of stuff and I'd do unit tests on that stuff. And then I might have some kind of functional testing or what do they call acceptance testing um, around, say, the HTTP stuff itself. So send a request with it, see what response I get back. And things of that nature. So, yeah, it doesn't come with anything special in terms of testing. Um, and I think that's part of the philosophy that you bring your own stuff and testing is part of that. But it also, I think, doesn't do anything that would interfere in any way with, with good testing practices. All right, great. The, that's all the questions we had. Uh, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit Joined In for this talk and leave Ed some feedback. Thanks.